Yo, 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 what's going on? This is Blair with the Car Guys, along here with Kyle, hey. aka Spoofy, not anymore. So, um, we're here today, the video we're talking about, we're going through with our um, top 10 decks that are going to be coming out for Dimension of Chaos. I mean, the ban list pretty much did me dirty with Shadals, and I, I was pretty sad. The video coming out soon about that, it's going to be pretty funny. <laughs> but, um, this, in the past year, you know, we've had, we had Tellers, we had the what was it, the the set that came out with Dolls and Burning Abyss, what was that set called? Duelist Alliance? Yeah. We had that and Tellers come out pretty much in the same time. And for an entire year, that and the Necros ran the year. Like, that's the only decks we saw have any type of success for the most part. And, I mean, it neutered me. It did. Um, if we would did this video maybe about two weeks ago, we could have been easily said our top ten decks of that um, seems to have been number one, Necros, number two, Necros, three, four, five, Necros and then nine and ten is everything else. But yeah, um, mm -hmm. with this new ban list, everything just getting like totally destroyed. They're trying to push new decks upon us, trying to push the old decks out because they're tired of everybody playing it. They're tired of everybody seeing that. Like, they want to get some, you know, some variety. Into yeah, I mean, the top decks. They're, they're trying to push pendulum, the mechanic of pendulums now. And at, at this point in time, I mean, it, I'm not a big fan of pendulums, and I think 99% of the community, like the competitive community, is not a fan unless you're a Clifford helmet. Player. So, I mean, at this point in time, you know, I think them banning Exiton just totally said, hey, pendulums are the future. And welcome to the future, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, without further ado, you know, here is our, uh, our top 10 list here. This is our opinion. I mean, you guys might disagree. You might think, you know, one deck is a you know, different number. But from what we looked at, we think that these decks in this order make sense to us. Anything else before we get into it? Let's get to it. Let's go. So coming in at number 10, we actually uh, have something you might not really think that might actually be in the top 10, and that's actually Necros. Now, let's look into Necros for a second. They just got hit by the ban list. Pretty bad, if you do say so myself. But I think even with the Band of Shirt and even with Brionic and Unicorn going to one, I think this deck really has a strong possibility of doing, you know, fairly decent in the actual, you know, the upcoming meta for a few reasons. And I'm going to actually go ahead and get into the reasons why. First off, yes, you know, they got neutered completely by the list. And with the whole thing with Shirt going, it, it doesn't seem very promising. But in, in fact, it actually does. Now, as you guys saw, um, you know, previous tournaments, you've seen a deck with Malicious in the deck. You've seen a deck with, you know, the Gym Knights in the deck. And that's actually, I think, the route it's going to go now is actually, you know, the Gym Knight version with Clowns. So you're going to get an extra normal summon. You get your normal summon of your Jew, get your searches and whatnot. You're going to be heavily reliant on Double Emerald now, in my opinion. And um, the, the mirror count is actually going to be a little different. Now... <clears throat> You're going to see a list um, actually up on our channel very soon about that as well. And I think per th the deck still is very powerful. Don't get me wrong. You still have the power play of Trish. You still have Decisive Army. You still have your Valkyrises. You still have the one Unicorn you could probably, um, you know, definitely try to recycle and everything like that. You do have the one Brionic. But the surge power isn't as, you know, you know, as strong as it used to be. Now, that's the one big problem of the deck. Now, with... You know, talking about the searching everything, there's a lot of stuff that's overpowering now in the format. So I think with Necros getting neutered the way it does, it does have a very hard matchup versus a lot of decks now in the format. Like, we'll just go ahead and say, you know, like the top three decks in our opinion, you know, it can't compete now with the playability of all these other decks. You have decks like Magic Spectres coming out, you have decks like, um, you know, Cosmo just getting all their support, and the deck had a lot of trouble already with that deck in gen those decks in general. And now looking at it, since they did get hit, yes, they took a very big fall. But at the same time, you might you might end up seeing one or two, one maybe maybe two. Like I said, you know, Necro's decks making it to a top, or you know, a few making day two of a YCS like San Jose. I've seen a lot of people actually wanting to play them, so definitely be on the lookout for a few Necro's decks actually making the cut and top 32 or top 64 whatever in San Jose maybe be on the lookout for the gym knights because you know gym knights they have a 
you know, the Gym Night Fusion, you can get Seraphim out on the field, you can normal summon again, you can send your clown, you can actually make really explosive plays. So the deck's really not as reliant on the fusion or the ritual summoning as it used to be. And which is a really cool aspect of the of the deck in general. Now when you see the transition from you know ARG format when they did in fact hit Unicorn One and stuff like that, it actually made a big difference and that's one of the reasons why, you know, a few of the, my players, you know, Chris and Ben did as good as they did because of the Gym Knight Fusion and that card really opened up a lot of plays to the deck. So definitely be on the lookout for Necros here in the upcoming format. All right, so coming in at number nine on our list, we're going to go with side frames um the side frames is a one of the newer decks that came in at high speed riders like a little filler set in between the main booster sets um side frames but why we chose this to be at number nine like people really weren't talking about it like you didn't really get to see that much play, like that much exposure about it until um it actually topped YCS Dallas with Omega that was being used in the front of the deck, made the deck a forty made that a forty dollar card. Um, those that don't know what side frames do, you should know by now. Pretty much what they do, they set up, um, they set up, they do play some traps or everything, like their main trap, uh, side frame overload is the nuts. If you pretty much either player's turn, banish the one of the side frame cards on the field or in the great on the field or in your hand, excuse me, and then you can banish a card on your opponent's side of the field face down and when it goes face down you can't get it back so that was really that's actually a really really strong mechanic i think that's the first mechanic that we've seen like that um my banishing cards face down like from the field so that's insane in itself then when that card dies um you can banish it not to turn not to turn it was sent to the graveyard but you can banish that card and you search any of your side frame monsters what the side frames do which is their like major game mechanic is pretty much you do anything your opponent activates a monster effect a spell effect, trap card effect. Um, they add, they reveal one of the side frame monsters in their hand. Then they get either the negate it. I know with the uh, spell trap monster effects, they negate that effect, destroy it, and then they special summon that and their vanilla monster uh, what's level six twenty five hundred attack. And they just special summon that and they get a presence on board and literally stop your play. They also have one for normal summon or special summons too so they try to cover a little bit of everything and going pairing along with that i'm um, not just special summoning that they also like do big single plays all their level one level two monsters that do that effect are all tuners so it's level one tuners and level two tuners so with that they can go into easy uh, level seven level eight um, synchro plays start trying to get that synchro mechanic coming back in and with that like also uh psychic field zone I know, like that's really, really old card, really ancient card for psychics. Pretty much they take uh, two psychic monsters, one tuner, one non tuner, where they're banished, put them back into their graveyard, and synchro summon a psychic monster. That is insane. And then also their field spell um, lets them synchro summon on their opponent's turn, not just a psychic monster, any monster. And of course, level seven, level eight synchros. Of course, there's the older ones they had, but they go into Omega. And the trap card, if the trap card so happens to die, um, while Omega's on the field, they, they banish it to get their search. They use Omega's effect during their standby phase, put this trap card back, keep doing it all again, recycle, recycle. Like, that's the biggest thing with the day, recycle. Like, that's the, their strong points, their strong points. The weak thing I want to say while I'm about side frames, why we have them at uh, number nine on our list, they are really, really slow. Like, dreadfully slow. Uh, like, um, if you don't, like, with your deck, if you're playing pure side frames, the main the main thing you're gonna be doing is you're gonna set a couple cards, might play Pot of Duality, card, card D, and then you set a couple cards, do you whatever, and pass your turn, that's it. There's really not much for you to do unless your opponent actually does something. And if your opponent is really skilled, knows what to do playing that deck, they're just gonna sit there and they'll set a monster pass. You draw, you don't do anything, you pass. They flip some of that monster, the, the side frame alpha, um, that with a normal special summon, when you normal special summon a monster, um, special summon it, get a search, and then special summon your side frame driver, it doesn't cover flip summon. So you flip summon, you don't use an effect, and you just attack. If they happen to have the attack, um, if they happen to have the one that um, negates the attack and ends the battle phase, that's fine. But if they don't, then you're just going to poke, 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 do the same thing over and over again. Another thing um, with that deck, it doesn't, it doesn't have a strong offensive play. Um, attack wise unless they have their synchros on board so if they if they can't like even though they're negating and stuff if they can't 
like keep monsters on board to keep attacking you, they're not going to kill you. But there are some different variations where they did um, actually make it to more attack based. The side frame you'll send you deck, um, they summon their uh, you'll send you on their turn, attack, clear spell, make all their um, you'll send you bounce back to their hand, and then their board is clear to do their uh, stuff with in hand. I that's how they did it, that's how they did it. It was great. The deck also loses to um, like heavily played cards like the Bunk and Chivalry, um, which was already in people's side decks for Cosmos and Necros, um, hand traps like for retaliating C for Shadows and stuff. So there's all those are cards that they're already using in their side deck, so they really didn't have to change much up to um, actually combat that card. And Mind Crush is also a big, big one. So that's our number nine for side frames. Coming in at number eight is actually Girgia. Now a lot of people are like, Kyle, Girgia, no. Well, yes, and we're gonna give us give you guys a few reasons why here. So Girgia, they got three gear back, and that's insane in my opinion. Now gear was the card that made the deck as powerful and explosive as it was. Um, gear, you know, brings out the Ano and the MK2 or whatever you want to play nowadays, and from there you get to make your rank four plays. You go into your Giga X. It's one of the best rank four engines ever in the game in my opinion, other than maybe like Satellar Knights and the, the Clown engine per se. But <clears throat> the deck has a really good way of just getting your armor, gaining advantage, and they play traps. Traps are the best thing in 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 the deck in my opinion because you can protect your monster get your searches and make an explosive play there are um, really cool plays you can do with the deck you can go into rank threes you can go into rank fours as well with the mk2 and then obviously with the gear and it's a whole rank four engine you have the new auger car that came out that's pretty much like a lone fire i believe for the deck and it's been a uh, it, we've been testing and it's been you know doing very well the only downside to the deck really is uh, you know you do have to play so many traps to protect your monster now with the deck you know you can do certain plays where you can like loop X's with your um, accelerators and stuff like that and being able to just spam out rank fours is pretty you know over was overpowering now one thing we think about with the deck going forward is yes you do have to play a lot of traps you can play like breakthrough skills fiendish chains mirror forces uh three gear, gear a whole bunch of defensive trap bottomlesses you might even play the trap tricks version in your you know marmelias in your deck and whatnot like we did at nationals in 2014. the only downside to the deck now i think with all the new stuff coming out is the <clears throat> the rank for it that they can make might be a little bit underwhelming compared to what it really was good with back in the 2014 days when you could really shut your opponent out. Now, yes, I do understand, you know, Abyss Dweller and, you know, Karen Gorgon and 101 and, you know, going to your exes and there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with the deck. I just don't think it can compete with the top decks now in the format. Um, that's the reason, I mean, we think it still can compete with, it's definitely a tier two deck. Um, we think it still can compete with a lot of decks, like you know the new the new decks coming out, like Gradles, DVDs, and um, I know that really doesn't say much about the deck and all, but stuff that got neutered, it can compete with those now, and it, it you know it thrives with you know it can it can beat you know rogue decks very well as well. So depending on the way you build the deck, it could be very well. It could be very well um, des described as. A very consistent and a very powerful deck if you're playing you know some sort of you know rogue matchup and now wish it all's out of the picture you know that's the reason why we see the transition of this into the top 10 so that's pretty much it for you know gear gear let me know what you think about that as well all right so we're going on number seven on our list you already know what we're gonna do get ready to put your photos on because you know we're taking a trip to the burning lake the burning abyss Number seven, um, our Burning Abyss, we say this right now, they did get a little hit on our new band list that starts November 9th, but it's still a strong deck. I still think it'll be a really good top contender in um, our, just in the meta so far. It's not be as strong as it used to, but the con the pros of the deck, excuse me, is Burning Abyss. They do what they do best. They put their floaties on, they float, 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 float. And that's really hard to um, combat if you don't have the right set of cards to stop that, because they'll keep circling everything. Dante is the best rank three hands down in the game so far. So the, the faster they can make, the fastest way, the faster they can make that, 
they're more likely they're gonna win the game, and they have multiple ways they can do it. Um, just having like multiple monsters in their hand, like monsters they don't want to use right then and there, like their Alex, their Cow Caps that they run it, or they probably be running now, but they're just any monsters that they don't use right there, right there. Special summon, normal summon that graph, singular, normal summon um, your Skarm or whatever, and then just get Dante and get to doing what a deck does best, and. It has one of the like uh, really really broken trap cards. Two really really broken trap cards. It's gonna be Fire Lake. This is gonna be like really really like heavily played. It's gonna be a staple for them now with a whole bunch of pendulum decks getting ready to happen. And um, actually traveling the Burning Abyss. When the uh, card first came out, when the deck preview, they didn't see that much play because they were like, oh, we have three monsters. What's this um, deck gonna? What's this card gonna do? Now it's so many different monsters. I think it's twelve monsters in all. Um, like Burning Abyss has like infinite plays you can do with Traveler, and I think they're gonna have to do that now more with uh, Grav being and landing their Seer going there too. The cons of the deck, it loses hard to Maxi. Maxi kills that deck, especially if they have to keep going. They open all monsters and none of their trap cards. Um, like through Burning Abyss's time period, when Necros came out, was when Burning Abyss went back to playing more traps. But Maxi, like no traps. They're gonna have really tough. They're gonna have to stop and just pray that their opponent doesn't OTK them. And with the pigeon decks, that's gonna be pretty hard to do. Uh, Flying C um, destroys pretty much any hand trap except Vayner. Ghost Ogre, not as much. It can kind of slow them down a little bit, but depending on what they hit, like they try to hit a Dante, then that's gonna mess up their play. But with one graph, two Seer, it might not be that bad. So we're gonna see what happens with that. Also, Dweller. Dweller is a really hard contender. Um, like when you have to play against um, Dweller. It's a really hard contender. So you have to make sure that you do your plays accordingly, that you're trying to play around the Dweller, especially if it has water material on there, you're starting to see more uh, Mermail players. So you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, Abyss Dweller. And with Nota being a really, like a staple of almost every deck, um, I've seen Burn Abyss um, playing Instant Fusion. Not really though, but. Um, like with Nota being there, like it's not hard for any deck to make um, a level 22 uh, dweller and dark large as well. So that's our thoughts on number seven. Coming in at number six is uh, Yang Zings, actually. Now, with Yang Zings, a lot of people are like, Yang Zings, why? Why Yang Zings? Well, um, we tested it in ARG format and the deck in general is very slow, yes, but going into this particular format, Unicor actually went the one. And that was one of the main problems with the deck, that the deck couldn't compete with Unicor. That was the one broken card that could just shut the whole deck down. Now let's look at this, now you have Boxia, Yazi, and Chaofeng. And you have you know access to Herald of Perfection in the deck, and you can and literally just go Chaofeng, you know Perfection. You have the traps to back up the deck. Now Creation became really good, and it also has a very good Cosmo matchup, which we're going to get into. So going into this format, you have so many cards that rely on you know light monster effects. You can go Chaofeng with the Chiwen and win the game. You can use your different archetypes to go to Chaofeng and pretty much just shut somebody out of the for out of the d game. Whatsoever, um, you play, you know, 15, 20 traps as well in this particular deck, and sometimes, you know, traps are very hard for a lot of decks to get around if they're played at the right time. And with uh, three creation, being able to crash into a monster and then actually go into a humongous, um, you know, synchro play um, is pretty, pretty insane. And you know, going back to what I was saying, you know, Yang Zings do have a very good Cosmo matchup, believe it or not. Um, Cosmo, they have to get damage in, and if they can't get damage in, there's no way they can win the game. And off one, you know, set Yang Zing monster, I'm pretty sure we looked at it, it was like five or six, you could like search five or six times, and our special summon five or six times, and you know, Cosmo could get nowhere with that at all. Yes, you might be able to run out of resources, but you have, you know, your your path to do things with. You can recycle your cards back into your deck, which is pretty insane. And be, being able to have like a Chow Fang that's unaffected by traps, unaffected by can't be destroyed by battle or something like that, is pretty insane. And that's pretty much, you know, one of the reasons why the deck is so good because you have Jiao Tu, Chi Wen, and Chow Fang to do your play. Start off with, you know, what is it? Um, 
um, gel two and two other ones. It's just it, you can make explosive, you know, unbreakable boards sometimes, and it's pretty insane. Now, you know, the downside to the deck is. You can brick really easy. Um, your opponent could, you know, end up going, you know, having the out, going dweller, and actually winning the game outright from there. Now we think it's it's a little bit passive now, and that's one of the reasons why we don't think it's as you know top as it is. Be Unicorn being the one problem with you know the deck in the past. Now it becomes very relevant because you have Dark Hole in the format. You can get your effects off. Get your um, you know your play set up to where you can go like boxy a boxy a boxy there is a cool few builds that you can turbo into with the, the level six to do really cool plays with and you know that's one of the reasons why we think this deck is you know one of the top contenders just because definitely unicorn is at one and the deck you know Necros was the only reason it wasn't doing as well. And as you guys saw, Jeff Jones actually did very well with it in the ARG with Unicorn at one as well. And it kind of proved that the deck is as powerful as it is. Um, so that's our number six. All right, so number five, I know this comes as a surprise to some people, maybe not. Our number five deck for the top 10 decks of the next format is gonna be Heroes. So what do you do? Pros? Dark Law, the man. Cons, I didn't get out Dark Law. All right, that's number five. <laughs> All right, I'm just playing. But um, for real, for real, um, the pros of, of um, actually playing Heroes, it is Dark Law. Dark Law stops a lot of plays. I know it was really big in the Necros format. Like every time you searched, all the main deck, all it does is search. So first search, Manju, Dark Law, a fan. You have nothing but blue in your hand. I don't know what happens. They always, always, always hit the right card with Dark Law. Every single time. But hey, that's the game. If they have it, they have it. But not even just Dark Law by itself. Like a lot of players, like if you saw uh, my matchup during the Battle of the Champions with Grayson, um, you actually saw him do some like nutty stuff with Dark Law. You might have seen him actually go into Ptolemaeus and make Durandal and then shuffle my whole hand back. And then I, yeah, I draw some more cards, but. He's gonna set off that dark law effect. I actually, um, the first regional of um, the new season, we went to North Carolina, I believe. I actually played um, another, like a hero deck, another hero deck, and I was undefeated at the time. He was undefeated at the time, and we're going into game three. He, he has dark law, of course. They always have it. Turn one. Um, I, I have one play. Like I do this play, I win the game. I activate my. I was playing necros at the time. Activate my mirror, dark bride. Yeah, let that, let that sing in for a minute. No matter how terrible you might think that card is, Dark Bribe plus Dark Law, I draw a card, and bam, Dark Law effect. So pretty much any time um, like they make Dark Law, it's gonna be a rough time for you. The cons, it is, like if you don't get Dark Law out, then you're gonna struggle a little bit, especially if, like that's your main focus. But that's why I like the different versions of the deck that can do other cool stuff outside of Dark Law. There, I think there were some um, that might have played some clowns in there. Instant Future's definitely gonna be in there. Bubble Man, Bubble Man sets up the um, other plays outside of Dark Law. And like, even with Mass Change, um, there were some decks that do play Form Change. But um, like going into your asset to blow out back row to have different answers for the Pendulum decks, especially Pendulum decks now, if you can go um, Dark Law, get your Bubble Man, make sure you get your Mass Change back, and you're playing Pendulum decks, and then you go Acid as well, you're gonna blow out their whole back, they're gonna blow out all their spells and traps, and then all that is getting banished. So Dark Law, uh, don't be afraid if you, don't be surprised if you see a lot of hero decks coming up in this next set, especially for the Pendulum decks, because even Pendulum, if they go from the Pendulum scale on the side, they leave, they're getting banished. So make sure you watch out for the heroes. Number five. Coming in at number four is actually Satellar Knights. Now this deck actually didn't get hit as hard as we actually thought it was going to get hit. Rota to one, 
hurts the deck a little bit. It kind of neuters it. Uh, it kind of just snips at the balls a little bit. We think, in general, the deck is still very consistent. You have one rota, you have so many traps, and you can get to your cards very easy with Pod Duality Upstart Goblins. And being able to spam your rank fours, you have, an, you have a barrier in the form of alpha. The deck still has a very strong matchup versus everything, in my opinion. Trivor is a card, if you guys haven't noticed. And Trivor is one of the sole reasons the deck is as good as it is. You can spam rank fours, you can go Ptolemaeus, and when Infinity comes out, it's going to be insane as well. So be on the lookout for Satellas. Being able to just go Deneb set five, or Deneb set four, or what have you, it's it's pretty insane. Being able to, you know, go into your trigger play, you know, disrupt the entire board, pick a card out of the hand, and set all reset all your cards, it's pretty insane as well. The deck actually does not lose to Exiton anymore. That was one of the things that we talked about. Now, Exiton... It, just playing in general, Exiton was one of those cards that you, in the back of your mind, if I make this play and I get a, if I get Exitoned, will I lose the game? And if it, the answer was yes, then you didn't make the play. And now we don't have to worry with that fear that we might get Exitoned. And that's one of the big things I think Satellus is going to thrive now because you know yes, Rota's at one, but at the same time, you know no, it won't you know, be susceptible to crazy cards. Um, Shadals are out of the picture now, so if you have to go into your, you, you don't have to necessarily have to go to Diamond anymore, you can go to other cards as well. I'm um, going Durandal. Durandal's a really good card as well. People don't actually play, but I think it's it could be used really well in Satella Knights as well. With talking about, you know, all of the you know, crazy spam plays that the deck can actually make. You know, the downfall is it did get a little bit less consistent um, with Rhoda going to one, actually. But at the same time, we honestly think that, you know, tellers have a really, can be beaten down really easy if you do stop one of their plays with a well-timed MST or a well-timed, you know, warning, vanities, emptiness, anything like that. If you can stop their initial call the haunted play when they're trying to do their a new call the haunted play, then they're going to have a really tough time. If they can't gain advantage early game, they're going to lose late game. And that's one of the things that we think the downfall of the deck is. But definitely be on the lookout for Tellers. I know a lot of people are going to be playing them in the upcoming format. We've been testing the deck a lot, so hopefully you guys, um, you know, definitely pick up the deck while it's cheap now so you guys can get on the hype train of Satellers. All right, so our number three on our list right now is a newcomer that's coming out um, in Dimensional Chaos. That's gonna be the Magic Spectres. Magic Spectres, if you don't know what that is, <laughs> that's gonna be the new Pendulum deck that's coming out right now. It's kind of, they're trying to make it to replace Cliff Force where they just neuter on the list. Sorry, Scout, but not really. Um, if you don't know what the Magic Spectres do right now, um, pretty much they focus, in, they focus on tributing their monsters to doing any kinds of effects and just get nasty with it. They, and every, almost every monster in the deck is a Stratos. They have, like, and they get their, the ones that search, they get their effects when a normal or special summon. That's including the pendulum summon as well. So you have one that searches out monsters. You have one that searches out spells. You have one that searches out traps. There's another one that if they turn it special at the end phase, you search another monster. I think their biggest monster they have is just the unicorn, Kieran. Um, it's 2000, that's their biggest monster. And during either player's turn, they return either a pendulum, either a pendulum monster, a pendulum or a pendulum monster. I think it's just pendulum monster actually, though. Don't quote me on that, but pendulum something, and then a monster you control, and then bounce them both back to the hand. That's during either player's turn. So battle phase, they do something. Oh, bounce, bounce. Let's go. Let's get the work. Their um, their field spell is insane. All their magic specters gain 300 attack and defense, and then um, they contribute. They contribute off one of their magic specters, especially some of the level four lower one from the deck. So. They just keep it going and going. The deck right now, I know for a fact, is definitely running um, Eccentric Archfiend, and it's also uh, running Draco Slayer, the uh, Pendulum one, the Tuner. So they do that. They Draco Slayer, another Pendulum monster, whatever it is, Eccentric, any of the other Magic Spectres. You didn't know, destroy it, add another um, Pendulum with the same name, get it, just full up their extra deck. Pendulum summon everything, effect, 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 effect. They're all level threes and level fours, except for the unicorn, I think it's level five. So they rank four spam, rank three spam, if they would call that a spam or whatever. I know the ones I've seen, I've seen um, Giga Brilliant, I've seen uh, Muse Rhythm. Like, I played, I played a match earlier and I had to face down a 3600 Muse Rhythm um, in the damage step. That's not fun. 
but I deck is really good searching everything is broke speaking of searching we know what the monsters do they search and everything the monsters also as well um, another fact that some people might not know about is they actually when they're on the field like when they're monsters they can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects so that gets really really annoying so no veiler no breakthrough skill ghost soak is gonna be really good because it doesn't target but anything that targets or i'm sorry you gotta catch me that destroys them too so it's really virtually hard to like try and stop those effects unless you have skills drain on board then i guess you're the man because you were one of but hey that's another story um the cons of the day tributing if you can find a way to stop them tributing like for their effects they're uh they have a uh, two spells one spell um you can tribute um one of the magic specters to destroy a monster on board um tribute one to return Attribute one of your monsters return it back to the hand. The trap card, um, it's actually a counter trap, spell speed three. You attribute one of your monsters and you can negate the inherent summon of a monster or a monster effect. That's really, really busted. But Ma uh, Mask of Restrict is really going to shut down that deck. And I guess if they open bad, like that's going to be like the rare case where they don't open a searcher. But it's gonna be hard to do that because everything tutors itself in the deck. It's kind of like if Necros and Cliff Wars had a baby. That's what Magic Spectres do. They definitely make sure that you stay worried about that deck. But this is our number three. All right, guys, coming in at number two, if you guys haven't seen already, is Infernoids. Infernoids, YCS Dallas. Let's look at it like this. Undefeated, 16-0, blew through all of Dallas, very, very unexpected. This deck, in my opinion, is very good, and here's a few reasons why. Deviati, Anunku, and Voidseer. Now, the deck, in general, has a very good way of getting those big monsters out in the forms of reasoning, in the forms of Monster Gate, in the forms of being able to mill your cards. Now, Raiden, the Lightsworn engine, is a very good engine. You can play a double Raiden, one card trooper, like one Lila, or something along those lines. Uh, to give you a better level ratio with reasoning. Now, currently with the new release of the card a few months ago, being um, Inferno Decatron, that card can become can foolish one becomes any. Um, it becomes any Infernoid that you actually want it to be, and it gains the effect, which is actually just insane. I said actually just, because it really is just insane. Now, um, with that being said, you know, you reasoning, and they call four, you hit Decatron, and you middle of this cards, and then you can Decatron and hit another card. And then when the Decatron goes to the graveyard, you can actually, you know, start using fodder with the Decatron. And the deck in general is pretty crazy because the release of Omega, it can go Omega turn one. Now, if you, um, you know, have like a level four, you can summon like, uh, you can go Decatron. Um, people are playing Photon Thrasher now where you can easily access your um, Omega. Omega is a big play disruptor for every single card right now, every single deck in the format pretty much. Being able to chain that to anything, disrupt a card out of the hand, or take a card out of the hand and, you know, and completely blow some out of the game is pretty insane. And being with Omega, being able to bring your cards back from Banish to the um, to the graveyard is pretty insane too. So you can keep on reusing your Infernoids to bring out monsters, which is actually insane um, knowing that if you only get three in the grave and you have an Omega, you have infinite fodder until they stop that Omega. Mecha, which is pretty crazy. Now, Deviati destroys the back row. It's got three, I believe it's 29 or three, 2900 attack, and that's pretty beefy to get over too. Now, now Necros can't really get over that unless it's a decisive armor or a card that can get over it with the size of arm in your hand. And being able to protect your cards with Void Seer is pretty insane. Void Seer can be used in a damage step. It can be used anytime you want it to. And being able to just use it like it's a quick play spell that can be quick played from the grave as well. It's, it's a broken mechanic in my opinion. I think people really underestimate the actual power of Infernoids. Now, looking into Infernoids, it is very easily sided against. You can play Lancia, you can play Imperial Iron Wall, you know, in general, if you just stop their first initial effect and gain advantage early, then you're going to win the game. Um, I've been saying that a lot, but at the same time, Infernoids have a really high chance of bricking. Um, and people don't really seem to understand that. I mean, obviously you have three you have three reasoning, a monster gate, double charge light brigade, you have Raidens, Lila. I mean, you can get your mills off and do your play, but if you open up a lot of monsters, it's very, very hard to do anything with. Now, 
you obviously you can side deck into galaxy cyclones you can side into decrees and those are really good you know cards to actually side deck in against certain matchups now you're gonna have to be combating against you know cards that prevent you from moving cards from play uh, which would be the form of you know Imperial Iron Wall, uh, Artifact Lancia, even DD Crow. I've seen people play, be playing DD Crow. Um, cards like that that really hinder you from doing, you know, what the main purpose of the deck is. And obviously, like I said, if you can't really gain advantage, then it's really hard for the, you know mid to late game when you're trying to make that push for game. Um, but yeah, you know, Infernoids they they're pretty insane. Not gonna lie. I mean, people he Eric Christensen proved it going 16-0 at Nats, or excuse me, 16-0 at Dallas, but that's Infernoids, it, the deck can make crazy plays um, early in the game if they get their cards off, and there's really nothing, nothing you can do to stop them, but that's pretty much it for Infernoids, definitely I suggest picking this deck up, it's obviously number two in our opinions for a reason, and we've seen a lot of big players actually being test, been testing it because it is so powerful. But uh, definitely pick up your Inferno cards. Harmony Dick is crazy. Uh, Decatron is crazy. Oh, pick up your Omegas. They're you know 30, 40 bucks now, but definitely worth it if you want to play the deck. All right, so we got down to the deck that we all been waiting for. Our number one on our list is Cosmos, aka Gals and Ships. So what can we say about this deck being number one that we haven't seen already? Well. We've all seen the potential of it. We've all seen the potential of Cosmos, mainly in the ARG um, side of the format. But in I know it's starting to come up a little bit in the Konami format. But now with um, Dimension of Chaos being released, it's seeing a lot, a lot of play. The main, th the main thing with the deck that people were afraid of was Necros of Trishula, because literally you have to keep um, monsters on. You have to keep your monsters on board. And then you couldn't have definitely have cards in your hand. Then you have some spells or whatever in the graveyard. And when Trish hits that board, then we got a problem. And their their red light goes on. But with uh, Necros taking a really really major hit, Cosmos are going to start seeing some really really strong play. The positives of Cosmos, they can do literally almost anything you want to do. Their main monster, Farm Girl. Um, whenever it does damage, you pay a little 500 life points. You search any Cosmo card. Any card, including the field spell, including the lightsaber, any of the big ships, any of the psychic monsters, including itself. That's really, really insane. You can literally search any card if you do damage with uh, Farm Girl. Uh, Straw Man is one of the newer cards. It's another e tele target, um, which brings the e tele target up to three with Farm Girl, Straw Man, and Ghost Ogre. If you choose to play it, you should be playing it. Uh, straw Man, when it's on the field, you pay 500. You special summon a Cosmo from the Banish Zone, which means you special summon your ships, you special summon your little girls, or whatever. And at the end phase, it gets destroyed. So if you bring back a ship and end phase gets destroyed, banish it, special summon another one, uh, special summon another um, Cosmo monster. Um, good Witch, that's your fi pay 500 Book of Moon. Um, a really, really good level four that they got right now is actually Wicked Witch. Or you know, Glenn of the Good Witch, and then you got the Wicked Witch of the West, or the Wicked Witch of the Cosmos, or whatever. So, with I really, really, really think that Wicked Witches are gonna be a really good card, especially for the mirror match. Um, during either player's turn, when it's on the field, of course, it has the banish effect, level five or higher, especially some of those from your hand. Um, when it's on the field, you pay one thousand during either player's turn. That card, the Wicked Witch itself, the one to use the effect, can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. So that's gonna be really, really good, especially like trying to save yourself from the OTK. Um, you put in the defense like that can be a really really strong first turn play you summon your wicked witch and In defense mode or attack mode whatever you pass turn like that's good and on to the ships now um, We got slip rider of course um, No more special summon you pop a card you pop, uh, pop a spell a trap including your own Which means if you want to if you special summon it, you can pop your Cosmo Town Cosmo Town will let you search any Cosmo card including itself like that's we need to stop making cards that search itself. That's too broken. That's too busted. Um, also, next above going up to six, we're gonna go up, keep going up the scale. Uh, numbers uh, level six we got is the Cosmo Dogfighter, um, Mike Vick. So, <laughs> so pretty much what that does um, it's two thousand attack, twenty four defense. That's the newer ones we got from Dimension of Chaos. Um, during each player's standby phase, you special summon a token, a Dogfighter token. It has the same exact stats as. Um, 
the original dogfighter. You put it in defense, keep special summoning tokens. I uh, build up a wall, you can switch them attack, attack, and leave your dog in defense position, keep spamming tokens. Uh, even at one point, you can actually, if you got enough tokens, say you're under emptiness, something happens, something happens, you don't have a farm girl, you got a ship in hand, you can tribute those tokens and normal summon your ship. That is amazing. That is really, really good. Going up, let's keep going. Number seven, level seven. That's going to be our forerunner. That was the big boss monster before uh, Dimension of Chaos. Uh, every, <clears throat> every time one of your standby phases go by, you gain 1,000 life points. You pay a lot of life points with this deck. Don't get me wrong now. So, Forerunner on board, giving you 1,000 every turn, that's really, really good. It's run strong. It keeps you in the game. It gives you more life points for you to pay to keep doing nutty stuff. And the biggest thing I think that was really good with um, Forerunner is that it can't be targeted by card effects. And that's really strong. So, no one on one, no Castell, no Diamond Dyer, no Compose, Deep Prison, anything that targets. Forget about it. Right, it's good. And then the newest um, boss monster that we got is the Dark Destroyer for Dimension of Chaos. Mr. Go get him, Mr. Steal Your Girl. Um, that's 3,000 attack. Um, eight, uh, 3,000 attack, level eight. Um, it has the same it has the same effect as Forerunner that it can't be targeted by card effects. Like that's insane. So they get two of those. Like that. How do you deal with that? Like two um, cards that can't be uh, targeted by card effects that are easy to get out. Just banish. A little small one, especially some of the big one, and also the added effect. I think which just puts it over the, the radar, puts it over the scale, over the bar, over the beam, over anything. Is that when it's normal or special summon, you can pop one of your opponent's monsters. So that's instant monster removal. Can't be targeted by card effects. So again, Vela breakthrough skill, anything that targets, and it's a three thousand beater. That's hard to get over. So you go. Uh, Dark Destroyer Emptiness, your opponent's gonna have a really, really hard time trying to get over that unless they got Dark Horror Geki, but they got it. Like, that's insane. Like, plus, for days, the deck can run Honest, the deck can run Jurgito, BLS, I guess, if you wanna take the route. They shouldn't be in the graveyard. If you get in, if they're in the graveyard, then you're having a hard time anyway. Um, well, I've seen people play a Lure of Darkness, um, the pair, um, with the doing with the newer ones, the Wicked Witch. Dogfighter and um, Dark Destroyer are all dark, so play Lure of Darkness, draw two, banish one of those three, play Cosmotown, boost Cosmotown's effect, add the banish one to your hand, like, we're pretty much, like, we're good, we're plusing. Like, it's really good, it's really good. But, there are cons with this deck, even though it's gonna be number one, there's problems with every deck, but this is gonna be the problems for uh, Cosmos. Um, anything that stops them from banishing, they have to banish to get their stuff going. Um, Imperial Iron Wall, people are seeing, like, they've seen a lot of play because people are scared of their photos. So that's just another card they have in the side deck, the combat of uh, the Cosmos. Um, Chivalry. Chivalry really, um, like, destroys that deck because a lot of their effects are going to be activated in the battle phase. Excuse me. A lot of their effects are going to be activated in the battle phase um, to, like, they attack with their farm girl, pay 500 search in the battle phase still, banish, especially some of another one. It's banish, special summon another one. So something happens, mirror force die in the battle phase. Oh, banish, search, a special summon another one. So chivalry is really gonna shut that deck down in the battle phase. Uh, Mind crush, if you know what they searched, can really hurt the deck as well. Not as much. Like if you're trying to play around Mind Crush, try to keep your hand a little secret. Don't search as much. Try to blind, like try to blind uh, some. Try to fake them out a little bit so they don't know um, what exactly you have in hand. If you feel like they're playing Mind Crush. But outside of that, it's not really much that can stop the deck. Maxi can hurt a little bit, not as much. But hey, if they got, if they got it. But this is our number one pick, Cosmos. I'm done with talking. I'm not gonna lie. That was, I think, pretty descriptive. I think you guys probably agree that of most of those choices, like. Let's just say for Gear Gear, for example, like that was pretty cool that we got through Gear Gear, right? But like at the same time, it just I don't think it can compete with, you know, a lot of the new upcoming decks in the in the you know the format. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true. But the one thing that I do want to say that like I'm so glad that we actually made this video. So I know a lot of people were really mad about how stale like the variety of decks were, like with Necro Shadows. I burned the bitch. They were tired of seeing those decks winning and stuff. So yeah. I think it's actually people are actually gonna be like looking forward to seeing like mo a multiple deck format, like where any deck um, has a chance to top. It's refreshing to be honest because it got stale, like you said. 
It's literally like, it's, it's like you haven't had a soda in forever and you're trying so hard to drink water only, but then that one time you cave and drink that Coca-Cola or whatever the hell drink you enjoyed so much, and you take that first sip and you just reminisce. And it's just so amazing, you know what I mean? Water sucks. Exactly, water does suck. <laughs> it really, really sucks. But I mean, I'm looking forward to this format. Obviously, we're gonna be doing another one of these very soon when uh, Breakers of the Meta comes out, as I like to call it, <laughs> with all the new cards coming out. We think, honestly, we've already been talking about this, but we think there's gonna be a total different, um, you know, top 10 decks. Like, I think cards gonna be pushed back even more with some of these cards coming out. Like, we're gonna be seeing, like, Atlanteans make a, make a really big, strong push with uh, Neptibis. We have Affinity coming out, and there's a couple of decks that can abuse Affinity really well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have Performer Pals and the, uh, the Magician, um, Shits, like whatever they're called, <laughs> or anything, and it's I can't I can't wait. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be real good. Well, that's pretty much it for us, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. It's we're trying to do like a, a a different thing. We're gonna be starting to do a lot more things with this. I actually just ordered my computer. Actually, just actually just actually just. Hey Zeus. So we're gonna you're gonna see a lot more streams from us in the near future. Uh, we're doing network tournaments, things along those lines. Um, I'm actually gonna be talking with a few editors as well. We're gonna be remastering the logo just a little bit. It's gonna be looking nice. We're gonna have an intro, stuff like that, and you're gonna see a lot more of us on this channel. And we're going to expand your knowledge of the game. But that's pretty much it from us, guys. I'm Kyle. And Blair. Later. Got a single digit budget, one hundred dollar rigs, a thousand dollar cutlass.